Welcome, welcome everyone to this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee on Thursday, December 7th, 2023. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Um, <clears throat> this evening's meeting also functions as a public hearing on our proposals. Um, <clears throat> the meeting is being recorded via Zoom, which will appear on the town website at a later point in time. Uh, <clears throat> and it's done via Zoom by authorization from the town of Amherst as well as the state. Uh, Bob has volunteered uh, to take care of minutes for this meeting. So that item is set to go. Um, <clears throat> I want to call on members to make sure that you can hear and that we can hear you. So uh, I'm assuming you can hear me. Uh, Tim. Uh, present. Matt. Present. Bob. Uh, present. Michelle. Present. Katie. Present. Good to see you. Uh, Robin. Present. David. Present. And uh, Doug Marshall had communicated to me earlier in the week that he's unable to attend this evening's meetings. Uh, so we have all our members here. Um, our agenda uh, is as listed on the town uh, website under the calendar. We did receive some additional information from the public over the last 48, 45 hours. And they were emailed to all of our committee members. But in addition, I just wanted to make folks aware that uh, the information documents that we received are also in packet two on the town website. So um, what, whether they could have been reviewed at this point in time or not, they still exist there for others. We received comments uh, from a few organizations related to uh, pickleball courts. Uh, one was a meeting that referenced uh, comments from the District One Neighborhood Association. Uh, and another was from the Misty Meadows Property Owners Association. Um, I do see that uh, Dave Zomack is in the audience as well, who had, uh, I believe, met today with the folks at Misty Meadows. I'm not certain that that occurred, but I, I believe that's the case. Um, and I guess before we start our public hearing, um, I do want to indicate that I'll probably commence with those who wish to speak on uh, projects other than the Pickleball Courts project to speak first. Uh, my guess is that there'll be more uh, more comments related to the Pickleball based on emails that we received. Um, I did see a hand up a moment ago uh, from Dave Zomack. Dave, do you wish to speak? Tim, yeah, I know you're entering your public hearing, but I just didn't know for the sake of clarity whether it might be appropriate for me to just say one thing about pickleball. I'm not looking for any questions or comments, but would it be okay if I said that before your hearing starts? Sure, that would be fine. We have I can be really I can be really yet. quick. Um That's just got a couple of very quick points. I know. I know you're short on time. Um, I just wanted to let the the public and um, um, the CPAC know. Um, you know, we've heard and appreciate the comments and concerns from uh, the Stanley Street neighbors. Um, we've met with representatives from the association. We've met with the Recreation Commission. Um, we've had numerous meetings. We've also had uh, heard from residents elsewhere in town who support pickleball, um, both in East Amherst but also in North Amherst. Uh, and we we just wanted to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of the of the original group who submitted the proposal a year and a half ago. Um, we all want pickleball courts in Amherst. We've just got to figure out the right place. Um, we want to assure folks that we're listening. We're open to creative options. 
Uh, we're not saying uh, Kiwanis is off the table for pickleball. Rather, uh, I like to say maybe we press the pause button on Kiwanis and we we step back and we want to proceed um, with the proposal for more funding, but study the siting more broadly throughout town. Um, we have done that, but we've learned new information. We've We've gained some partners through this process. And so I just wanted CPAC to know that before you hear from everybody that we're open and we're committed to um, you know, an open and transparent process. So we want to proceed with the proposal, but it's not specific to Kiwanis. We want to hit the pause button on Kiwanis based on all the input we've we've received. So that's all I want to say. Thanks. Uh, uh thank you, Dave. I appreciate uh your providing that uh, update or clarity for us, and as well as all the uh, uh, work that the town staff have done in relation to the various proposals, including uh, the pickleball proposal. So um, I guess at this point, we can proceed with our agenda. And the first item on our agenda is public hearing for all proposals. And again, a public hearing is uh, an opportunity for community members to comment or share thoughts on any particular proposal and for our committee to listen. It's not a uh, session where we have back and forth discussions. We hear uh, what individuals say. We have, as a committee, received uh, written information and uh, in, including uh, letters and slideshow and documentation, which I've had an opportunity to look over and we all can look over more thoroughly later. But the public hearing is a session where we where we, we listen and uh, it's in everyone's interest, I believe, to hear from the public. We want to give everyone who wishes an opportunity to speak. So um, I'd like to proceed then. Uh, with the first agenda item and to invite members of our attending community members to uh, raise their hand if they wish to speak. First off, on anyone who wishes to speak on something different than the pickleball courts. I'm not sure how long the meeting would go. I'd like to deal with the other proposals first. That's not to say I would exclude some exclude anyone later in the meeting if they arrive late from speaking on something different than pickleball. But I'd like to not uh, delay those who uh, have comments on some of the other proposals. So is there anyone in the audience who wishes to raise their hand to speak on a proposal at this time uh, that is distinct from the uh, pickleball proposal? I can see a number of attendees. I'm not sure if you're able to uh, raise your hands or not. If for some reason you're unable to, you can seek to contact us via different avenues. We, or even later in the meeting, our interest is to enable comments from the public. We welcome uh, any information that's provided. So I'm not seeing at present any hands up. I'll wait another uh, 30 seconds or so. We have in our prior meeting received lots of comments and uh, letters as well, which we do retain as a committee for everyone in the audience. We, uh, we do uh, retain all the documents and communications that are provided to us for our own internal uh, awareness and, and thoughts on the projects. I do see a hand raised in the audience from Carol Lewis. Uh, Carol, if you're able to uh, just hear me, uh, we welcome you to our meeting. Um, thank you for joining us. We'd be glad to hear what you have to say. I, I know you've already heard from me because I presented uh, uh, Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust's proposal. And so I two things I would like to say. One is just as a kind of a 
private citizen, it is really important to me to see this funded. I have so many neighbors and friends who have really don't have anywhere stable to live. And so the work that we can do to make there be more housing in town is very important to me. And the other thing I want to say is, I think that I may have told people who might want to comment that this started later than it does. I apologize for that. But I just wanted to give you a heads up that it's conceivable, not necessary, but conceivable that will be people will be showing up later that want to talk about housing. And I apologize for my, if I did it, getting incorrect information out. Out of, out of curiosity, I, I realize I said I wouldn't comment. How late did you indicate that they might join the meeting? <laughs> I thought it started at seven. I got it mixed up with our meetings, which do start at seven. I'm sorry. I just really... I perhaps I don't know quick, what to say. I'm sorry. <laughs> perhaps a quick email would be in order. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, well, thank you, and, and I didn't mean to interrupt your uh, comment, Carol. Please uh, continue with anything you wish to say. Oh, I am I still there? I don't know. You can are. you hear me? We okay. Can hear you. I don't know that I have anything more. I mean, I've I said so much everything as a trust member that I wanted to say about how important all of it is. This is just me as a person who knows people who can't find any place to live, but that's affordable for them in Amherst and have to live other places, even though they maybe work here. And so it's just kind of, I'm adding my personal appeal as a, as a, as a resident to whatever I already said. And so thank you. Thank you, uh, Carol. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to uh, share any comments? Uh, I'm not seeing any hands. I guess I would say that uh, at this point in time, it's it would be fine to comment on any of our presentations, including pickleball courts, because I not seeing a um, excessive volume of uh, individuals looking to speak at this moment. So um, I do see a hand raised by Richard Bogarts, if I pronounced that correctly. And uh, Richard, if you can hear me, I'd like to thank you for coming to our meeting uh, and uh, seeking to participate and we welcome your comments, and we're here to listen to you. Uh, so the floor is yours. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Richard Bogarts. I live a few feet away from the intersection of Willow Lane and Stanley Street. That means I'm among the very closest of the residents in the Misty Meadows project to the Kiwanis Fields. Um, I'm 87. I have some health problems. I need to be able to take daily naps and pickleball at Kiwanis may be a threat to my health. I don't know that to be the case. I wanna thank Ryan Harb for gathering the important information on best practices for sound abatement. I wanna thank the leadership members of the Misty Meadows Association for mounting a neighborhood response to the problems with the proposed site at Kiwanis. And special thanks to the leadership for finding an attorney experienced with pickleball issues in Massachusetts to represent the neighborhood if the issue goes to court. I urge the Community Preservation Act Committee to carefully consider the facts that Ryan Harb has assembled and to reach the obvious conclusions that A, pickleball in Amherst is something to fund. B, the Kiwanis location is the most intrusive and is the most expensive if done according to best practices or even according to reasonable sound abatement practices. And C, one of the two better locations Ryan has found should be chosen if we are to have affordable pickleball. Thank you. I also want to thank uh, Dave Zomack for his comments that he presented at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, uh, we appreciate hearing from you. 
I see another hand in the audience and in one moment, <clears throat> one moment, please. Yes. A Pat Anabaku, if you're able to. Oh, hear us. I'm, I'm sorry, I had uh, Brian Harp up first, I believe. Well, um, hello. Yes, we can hear you, Pat. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, this is Pat Ananibako from Tamarack Drive. I'm one of the abutters. I'm also uh, the vice president for Misty Middle Association. Thank you for the opportunity for me to speak very briefly. First, I want to thank our town staff, uh, Mr. Zomek, um, Mr. Hap, uh, for their understanding because they've met with some of our um, association reps. And I'm here to say that I do support uh, Pickleball uh, to be funded, but I don't think this year is the right year. I don't think um, we're quite ready as there is no location has been um, identified. I don't think that Kiwanis in my neighborhood is the right location. I do have a family member that has autism and noise. He, he's very sensitive to, to, to noise. I did mention that the last time when you guys met. And I'm, I'm appealing to all of you, when you do your deliberation and make your decision, to consider the health of, of Misty Meadow um, resident, please. Let's avoid lawsuit because it's not going to do any good for anyone. Let's not drag this to lawsuit. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pat, for joining us, taking the time to share your comments. Uh, we appreciate uh, hearing from you. Um, <clears throat> I see, let's see, Richard's hand is still up and Pat, your hand is still up. You might uh, lower them if you're able. Um, and looking in the audience, I do see a hand from a few individuals. Uh, Ryan, I'd like to, I believe you were first, I'd like to uh, invite you to share your comments. Thank you. For Thanks. Us. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank, thank you all. Um, Dave, thanks. Dave Somek, thanks for your comments at the beginning. Um, Ray Hart, thanks for meeting with us today too, and Carolyn Mailer as well. Um, thank you, CPA Committee, for allowing us time to, to do public comment and to have a democratic process like this. I know it's not very fun. I know when you know there's things like this and there's contention, it's it's uncomfortable. But I so I, I appreciate you, you all allowing this. And I just wanted to start off tonight by saying that the neighborhood where I do live, uh, Misty Meadows, it's it's a really special place to me. And I've lived here in my home for more than 16 years. And during that time, I've gotten to know my neighbors. And for those of you from the neighborhood that are listening, I just want to say that you all are really special to me. And you're important in my life. And so I, I think it's really rare these days for neighbors to become close with one another and to help each other out when one of us needs assistance, like a, a ride to the doctor's office or to help out with somebody's car or offering to pick up groceries or medicine during COVID. So Misty Meadows is to me such a special neighborhood and it has such wonderful people living here. And I'm just really happy and proud to live here myself. And so when we found out that there was a big potential change being proposed, like for our quiet and lovely neighborhood, it led us into this deep dive on, on pickleball because the impact that it could have on, on different neighbors. And so, you know, what we found, and I, I sent it to you all um, already, so I, I'm trying to make this short, but pickleball is one of those probably single most contentious issue right now having to do with recreation across the country. And it's because it's been so successful, it's been so fast, and there was this rapid build-out phase. 
And now we're in this unintended, unintended consequence phase, as I call it. Um, and it's because pickleball noise now, finally, it's, you know, come out after a few years of, of people kind of saying, hey, I'm hearing it. It creates a notable change in the acoustical environment of the area surrounding the courts. And in comparison to other recreational activities, it's a different type of noise. It's considered an, an impulsive sound by acoustical engineers. And so it can make it difficult to relax, to concentrate, and to sleep. And we have neighbors here in Misty Meadows. They work from home or they sleep at different hours because of medical conditions or the jobs they do. And some have health conditions that would be negatively impacted by the consistent noise coming from pickleball courts. So it, it kind of just leads us to this point, right? It's, well, what do we do? We can say no pickleball and be against it, but I don't, I don't think that's the right solution. Uh, there's best practices that we can look to and where to build courts, the best practices being, you know, 600 feet from residential and measuring it from the edge of the pickleball court to the edge of the property line so that, you know, people who can be in their yards um, aren't as impacted by it and hiring an acoustical engineer to do a noise impact assessment uh, if it's within 600 feet. So these are best practices that Amherst can consider. And this is something too that we're not just saying, don't build this at Kiwanis Park. We're just encouraging you know, thoughtful, careful deliberation on where to put it because we've seen so many issues in other communities by doing this deep dive into the issue. And so I, I just want to end with, we had a really good conversation today with Dave and with Ray and with Carolyn, and I'd say we're in a really good dialogue right now. And at the end of the day, the costs for building pickleball courts, if it's located closer to residential, the costs do go up because of sound abatement, right? That's, that's the thing we're all trying to grapple with now is that it's costing more. So I'd, I'd say we, we don't want the CPA to just kind of vote this down necessarily. Um, maybe some of us do, some of us don't, but I think if it was voted to still fund the, the ask for this year, that we could work with that. And I'd like to volunteer to create what other communities have done, which is create a pickleball working group. And I think that's what we need right now is we need to come together as a community. Like we're in this little bit of contention point, but. We can have friends of pickleball group, members from the Rec Recreation Commission and Recreation Department, town officials and Misty Meadows come together to just work together to select an appropriate site. And so I think that's that's our path forward. That's my, my closing thought is just, if we work together on this, we can do this. It might not be right away, but we have all the information and by working together, we can make this happen. So thank you. Thank you for allowing me a little extra time too. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Ryan. You're quite welcome. And for those listening, and Ryan included, we did receive uh, the documents, slideshow, and others that were provided. It was communicated to all members, town staff, and it has been added to the meeting packet. Uh, so thanks to any community members that have provided comments and information so far to our committee. Um, I do see another individual uh, whose hand is up and I believe the next person is Maria Kopicki. Uh, Maria, if you're hearing me, uh, thank you for joining our committee here in this meeting. And I'd like to invite you to speak if, if you're able to at this time. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, uh, I'm so sorry. I just got the notification. Somebody just pinged me that this was happening. Are you are you taking public comment on the CPA applications for this year? That's exactly what we're doing. We're in the public hearing. Fantastic. Of our meeting. Okay, great. Um, I am uh, calling in to speak up in loud favor of improving the softball fields. Um, the softball fields throughout town are in very rough shape. Um, they're actually dangerous to play on. They're undulating. The ball bounces at crazy angles. I've been injured myself because of this. Um, 
people I'm amazed that nobody's broken a leg because of the humongous it's like crater like holes at um at all of the bases so they need a lot of love um and the the backstops are non functional they don't go down all the way so um, I saw the application that went in. I am thrilled that this is happening. As you all know, um, soon the one of the uh, fields that we that is our primary field to play on, Fort River, is going to be out of commission for a couple of years while yay the school building uh, gets done. But that's going to take it out of out of commission. Groth Park. There's one field that's positively unplayable. The other one is just barely. Kiwanis is not good. You know, the the high school is is not really fabulous either. So um, all of my softball colleagues in town, I, I, I really apologize because I told them I'd give them a heads up and I forgot to check the calendar. We would, there's a lot of people that really want this. And I think we can grow the softball program in town. It used to be a lot more teams and then COVID kind of damped it down. And the fields have, are a reason for it being damped down as well. This could be really game changing, forgive the pun. So thank you very much to Amy for putting this, this request in. Um, and if you are still taking, I hope, um, written, um, feedback I'll have people write to write to you Sam or the committee to to uh, so you can hear from more softball players about how appreciative we are uh thank you Maria we do have the uh I believe it's Amherst CPAC although I'll check the email you're welcome to email me and Holly uh, as well and uh if you wanted to send a test email to confirm receipt that would be fine as well um, we're, as we indicated in the public hearing portion, public comments, uh, and we commence after a few agenda items with internal discussions regarding the various uh, proposals, uh, perhaps later this meeting and also the subsequent week, not sure of the duration. So thank you for taking the time to um, join us and to share your comments on softball. Thank you. Uh, I see William and Catherine Vertz, if I pronounce that correctly, uh, are in the attendees list with their hand or one of their hands raised. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you are here and welcome to comment on any of the proposals that you wish. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Excellent. Um, I am William Verts. My wife is Catherine is sitting next to me. We live on Stanley Street. We are the closest property to where the proposed pickleball courts would be built on Kiwanis. Um, we uh, are absolutely committed to making sure that pickleball gets built somewhere in Amherst. We are not happy about it being 85 feet from our property line. Um, and uh, we are, as I said, we're going to be working with you as best we can. We are very appreciative that uh, Dave Zomek and uh, uh, Ray Harp met with us today. I think we had a very productive meeting. Um, my wife has a statement she'd like to read. Hi, this is Kathy Burtz. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, the Stanley Street Misty Meadows area is a quiet family neighborhood. Um, we see wild animals in our yards very often, uh, deer, other animals. We hear bird songs. It's very rural. And Kiwanis Park sits in the middle of our neighborhood. We are not anti-sports. We, at our last neighborhood meeting, we all mentioned we enjoy hearing the school children play soccer and softball. Uh, the games last maybe an hour or two. And to us, they represent summer. Um, folks play ultimate frisbee at Qantas Park. Other folks drive up and let their dogs out to romp. Um, we're not, also not against pickleball, but we're deeply concerned about the noisy pop, pop, pop of pickleball near our houses. Um, it can be heard inside people's houses. Um, it would make sitting on the back deck listening to bird songs very difficult. Um, and it's, it's not just us, it's the rest of the neighborhood. We're all together on this. 
Um, we thank the town of Amherst for listening to us. And we are willing to work with the representatives to determine um, mutually agreed on place to build pickleball courts. Um, we're willing to work with the pickleball community to help find a place to site it um, that follows best practices for sound abatement. So um, please, um, please um, understand that we are willing to be cooperative. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, William, and thank you, Catherine. Uh, we appreciate your taking the time to join us and sharing your comments and thoughts. Uh, I see Carlos Turiago in the audience. Uh, your hand is raised. I'd like to uh, invite you, Carlos, to share any comments you wish with our committee. Uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you to all members of the panel. Um, I think that my community has made a great, great argument. I don't like the word argument, but in terms of expressing our feelings as a community, I live in, I, my neighborhood has two main streets, Tamarack and Willow Lane. And I live on Willow Lane. I don't want to go and repeat what has been said. I just want to say two things. First, David, I couldn't make it today. And I'm so disappointed because it seems to me that it went, it went very well. The meeting with my neighbors. And I'm going to go back to what you said, David. Let's press the pause button and wait. So what I'm going to say to all of you, that's a great invitation to have a productive conversation. Let's be creative. Let's do something together as a community. Let's work together and see where is the best location in town for the pickleball field. Everybody in town has right to play pickleball. I agree with that. But I want us to make a decision that we don't have to regret because there was a lawsuit and the town didn't win it. I don't want to go there. The money that we're going to spend on lawyers, let's spend it on the field. Let's come together. If we have to pitch in, let's do that. We can do that together. I was in a meeting on Tuesday and somebody was suggesting that. So we need to be creative. And creativity, it speaks about working together. I appreciate what you do for the town, for the community. And David, thank you for your, your words. I really appreciate what you said tonight. So let's listen to David's invitation. Let's press that tiny button. We don't have to rush it. And let's work together. Let's have a beautiful conversation. We find the best place. And everybody in town is glad because we did that together as a neighbors. I don't know you that well, but I feel that you're my neighbor. That's the way I see it. You are not my enemy. I don't want to fight against you. I appreciate what you do for the town. So help us to come up with something that is beautiful, creative, and original. That's my invitation to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join us and sharing your thoughts and comments uh, on this proposal. Uh, I'm not seeing another hand raised in the audience at the moment. I'd like to invite anyone who's attending this evening's meeting to share any comments or thoughts that they have on any of our CPA fiscal year 25 proposal applications. Um, if there's something you would like to say, please raise your hand and so that we can see it. Not seeing any hands at the moment. I just want to remind those watching and those in the attending audience that this is a public hearing on the fiscal year 2025 uh, Community Preservation Act uh, applications, uh, proposals, we use those words uh, together. And it's an opportunity for those who wish to share their thoughts with our committee uh, and with those who might watch the recordings 
to uh, provide any comments, thoughts, information to us. Um, so I'll, I'll wait a little bit here uh, in case uh, someone's having any issues with their, their uh, computer or otherwise. Uh, so again, <clears throat> our committee welcomes comments from the public. Uh, we've sought to in, uh, invite folks or via public notice and on the town website. Um, we do as a committee consider uh, any information that's provided to us as we discuss uh, our Community Preservation Act committee proposals. Um, I'm not seeing any hands. I don't want to rush to end the public hearing portion of our meeting. Uh, so I'm gonna wait one more minute if anyone uh, wishes to speak. I do see a hand raised from an individual, Erica Piedade, if I said that incorrectly, forgive me. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Um, I'd like to invite you to share any comments you wish with our committee. Thank you, Sam, and thank you all the members of the Community Preservation Act Committee. Um, I'm here on behalf of myself as the resident of Amherst. Uh, as you know, I am a co-chair of the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust, but I'm speaking as an individual who's lived here since 1994. I've been here since 1994, and I myself have experienced how difficult it is to find affordable housing. I actually uh, was a grad student at UMass, so we have an opportunity to um, uh, create affordable housing for all kinds of members who wanna stay here in the community, who feel that they contribute to the community. Affordable housing is really, really critical uh, in Amherst. Uh, affordable rentals, affordable home ownership, what I've seen is, is that there are so many talented individuals either working uh, here in Amherst who cannot afford to live in Amherst and cannot afford to raise their families in Amherst. Uh, one of the reasons we came actually lived in eastern part of Massachusetts. And one of the reasons we came out here is not only to go to grad school, but we also knew that the Amherst community was a wonderful place to raise uh, a family. And I also knew that the only way I could raise my family in Amherst was by coming to grad school and living, uh, actually working at UMass uh, while I was in grad school, I was a residence hall director. I actually was offered a job uh, and I could not take the job because I did not want to move my children out of the Amherst High School system. And so I refused taking the job and continued just being a grad student. I know that there's so many individuals, families who want to live in this community and want to uh, engage with the community, give to the community. This is a wonderful place to be. There are young families who want to be here. And what we're seeing is more of seniors, which now I'm part of myself, uh, as well as very young people or students. And so it is just so, so important to provide support to the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust to create diverse opportunities, rentals, as well as home ownership, as well as supporting uh, agencies that advocate for the development of uh, affordable housing. And so I really plead to you to really think about uh, providing support to the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust that really speaks to some extent, uh, engages with the community, doesn't speak for all the community, but really keeps affordable housing on the radar and is a strong advocate to make sure we have a diverse, thriving community. So, um, Thank you for letting me speak as an individual who lives in Amherst and has been here since 1994. Uh, thank you, Erica, for all the work that you do and for taking the time from your busy schedule to join us and share your thoughts. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Uh, and we're here uh, this evening to listen uh, to you and others. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm not seeing another hand raised in the meeting, although I do see a few new individuals here. 
Um, this is a public hearing related to the fiscal year 2025 CPA applications, proposals for the town of Amherst. And I would like to, again, invite anyone who wishes to make a comment, public comment for our committee or to share their thoughts on any of the proposals uh, to raise their hand and uh, share your comments with us. I'll, uh, I'll wait again uh, for another minute here. Uh, and anyone who wishes to speak, you are quite welcome to uh, share your thoughts with us. So I'm not seeing any hands raised. I'll give, I used to be a bartender. I'll make a final call, last call. <laughs> it's 12.59. <laughs> You'll have to finish it in the next 15 minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> Thirty seconds. And if many of you raise, we'll continue longer. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Uh, if I'm missing something, somebody please let me know. Well, thank you all who have uh, spoken on behalf in favor or against any of the projects. Uh, uh, we're glad to hear from you. I guess I will end the public hearing portion of our meeting uh, at this time. So thank you all. Uh, we will continue with our meeting. And interestingly enough, uh, whether we need to or not, the next item on our agenda is public comment. Uh, public comment is a requirement for any public meeting, any town meeting. Uh, so we have it on our agenda, rightfully or wrongfully. And I guess the distinguishing factor would be you can speak on anything related to CPA, not necessarily the proposals. So again, I'd like to welcome anyone who's listening uh, to share any comments that they wish regarding CPA in Amherst or any of the proposals for that matter. Oh, wait a minute. I see a hand is raised. Uh, it, it was raised. It may be lowered at this point. Uh, I saw a hand raised from Richard. I'm not sure if you wish to speak or not. If you do, please raise your hand again. If not, uh, no worries. I see the hand going up and down. So I'm going to make the assumption that there's a desire to speak, and I will invite you, if you wish, Richard, to uh, share a comment. Yes, I do. Um, I don't know. It, it's, it was saying raised when you, I think you were seeing it not raised, uh, but on my screen it was saying raised and vice versa. <clears throat> I just wanted to make a comment um, concerning the the practice of showing the members of the committee, but not showing the speakers from the public. I've been on countless Zoom meetings, but practically, well, many of them were at the university, um, but in other contexts too. And uh, in those meetings, the practice was to show everybody, even if it took multiple screens, and I would have really enjoyed seeing the people who were speaking to the issues um, from the public. 
And I ask you to consider the possibility of elevating the speaker to visibility. That's all. Uh, thank you, Richard. I, I was not cognizant myself that there's an inability for those speaking to be displayed. Uh, we've had many meetings where those who join us are able to be seen. I'll make the assumption that your camera is on. Uh, and if that's the case, I can't explain it. And I'm, I apologize for our committee on, on that behalf. We certainly uh, welcome viewing anyone. I think it's a beneficial form of communication along with the words. I, um, I hear what you're saying and understand. Uh, Michelle, I see that your hand is raised. I assume it's in relation to this. Yeah, so Richard, I share your frustration and I've experienced it on different public meetings. So right now we can all see you and your name. We can see all of the attendees because we're all panelists, but I think that none of the attendees can see who's there. And it, it sounds like what you're saying is wow. that they can't see your name as you are presenting, even though we can. And I don't have a solution to it, but I agree that it could be better and that we could, you know, as you know, in all town meetings, find a way somehow through experiment to let the public see who's present and let who see who's speaking in terms of their name. So if anybody on the committee knows how to handle that, you know, in general, I'd be interested, but I'm just giving you some feedback as to what we see versus what you see right now. We can look into that for subsequent yeah. meetings, I guess. I, uh, I, guess I will one. double check on that. I'm wondering if it is this this meeting um, link has been recycled, meeting after meeting after meeting, and there may be something in the in the um, Zoom parameters that does not allow that. But once again, we can all see each other, and we have been able to see people, I believe, on occasion. Maybe it's just their photos. Um, but not I do apologize. Meeting. It was not intentional in in any by any means. So uh, comment well received, and we will look into that. And thank you so much. And uh, again, apologies on behalf of our committee for um, that inability to see your photo on screen, if that's what was desired. Uh, thank you, Richard. Um, <clears throat> Any other attendees uh, that wish to share a public comment, uh, we'd be glad to hear from you. I'll give a uh, 30 second warning. <laughs> Our clock is set fast. <clears throat> If there's anything you wish to say, we'd be glad to hear from you. Just uh, raise your hand. <clears throat> okay, so I'm not seeing any uh, further uh, desire from community members to make a public comment at this time. I'd like to thank those who have shared their thoughts with us. Uh, we, as a committee, appreciate it very much. So the next item on our agenda this evening is to approve any outstanding minutes. I'm not aware that we have received any uh, minutes or draft minutes in time for us to uh, approve them this evening. We did receive some draft minutes, I believe, from Katie uh, this afternoon, uh, but uh, we did not get a chance to put those in the pack at this time. We will have them available for the subsequent meeting. <clears throat> um, so that's that agenda item. The next item on our agenda is to the review the financials. Uh, excuse me for a moment. Uh, Dave Zomack, I see that your hand is raised. Yeah, I, um, I, I wanted to ask Holly, do they need to take a, does the community need to take a vote to close the public hearing? Because the whole meeting is not really a public hearing. I don't know how formal you've done these in the past, but you open the public hearing. Now the public hearing closes, the rest of the meeting 
is not a public hearing. Maybe I'm, that's typically how- I'd be glad to take a vote to do so. Yeah, if that's it's what just nice required. to wrap up the public hearing. That part of the meeting is closed and then you go into the rest of your agenda. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Us. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Uh, assuming, is there any discussion? I see no discussion. So we have a motion on the floor to close the public hearing. Um, I'd like to proceed with a roll call vote. Uh, I will vote aye. Tim? Aye. Matt? Aye. David? Aye. Bob? We're not able to hear you, Bob. You, can you unmute your microphone? Uh, Michelle? Aye. Robin? Aye. And Bob? Aye. I'm just too busy doing minutes, you know. <laughs> yeah, I understand. And Katie? Aye. So the motion passes eight in favor, uh, zero against, one absent. Uh, thank you, Dave, for that uh, thought for us. Uh, Matt Kane. Uh, yeah, I'm conscious that Michelle is going to leave in a few minutes. And um, later in the meeting, we're going to do our straw poll numbers. Um, and I, I think it would be good to have her numbers in there as well. So if she could maybe send them to Holly Drake to get read in or. Michelle, I see that your hand is, is up. I'll hopefully only be away for a few minutes, 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. If for some reason you miss it, of course, we'll receive your information. Yeah. Um, and you would need that in real time. Um, mm -hmm. We'll receive information as available. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, 10 minutes should not be problematic. Uh, well, I, so I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just join, uh, joining another public meeting to give public comment. And then I would hopefully be right back. I understand. And, okay. So if I'm not, not if for some reason that's delayed, can I give you the public comment after the meeting? That's of fine. Course. Okay. It will Great. work either way. We'll make it work. And Doug Marshall's unable to attend this evening. He had provided his, uh, straw poll numbers, not a vote, of course, just initial uh, commentaries on our, our general thoughts for discussion purposes. So um, <clears throat> we'd close the public hearing portion. We included in that our public comment and our approval of outstanding minutes. Those have not changed. So I'll proceed to the subsequent agenda item of reviewing financials. Um, <clears throat> Holly has provided us updates uh, including the general budget projection for fiscal year 2025, but also information relating to um, debt projections for future years. Um, uh, very uh, helpful information, a lot of work, I'm sure, uh, has gone into uh, creating this to assist us in our understanding of where we are. Uh, I know there are committee members who have expressed an interest in our discussing our general financial situation uh, in advance of deliberations, which makes sense. Um, so I guess, uh, Holly, if you're able to give a quick, uh, not even a quick, if you're able to display your uh, CPA budget, budget projection for our committee to review. Sorry, I was muted. Sorry, I was trying, just trying to find the right file here. Yes. Um, so, um, you know, once again, very similar to last time, although I do want to point out here that we did receive the additional funding from the state. So our FY23 match that is received in FY24 in this current fiscal year 
um, came out to $398,325. So this had originally been estimated at the 275. So it does give us, you know, a little bit more flexibility about another $123,000 um, as that has um, been received. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing that has changed in the financials at this point. That is, um, you know, more than likely all that will change um before we get to deliberations and votes the only other thing that i still just want to point out to folks is that there was the 164,463 dollars that was voted as a budgeted reserve which we would either um we, we could either allocate to a project um during this current fiscal year before June 30th. Um, after June 30th, this will automatically go away and be rolled back into available funds, or we can choose at, at the point of our um, our voting and our deliberations to use it now. So that's the only number that um, is just sort of dependent on what we choose to do with it. It will revert back in the next fiscal year, it can be used during the current fiscal year, or we can vote to, you know, basically um, take it away and add it to our FY25 allocations. So we use it, or we lose it, or we, um, well, we don't lose it. it. It just goes back into the pot next year. It doesn't go away. But if we choose to do nothing, um, it just will be added with the f with the following fiscal year, if that makes sense to folks. So if I hear you correctly, we can use it for fiscal year 24 if we wish. We can vote it into fiscal year 25, 25. or if we do nothing, it will, um, it will, roll, then it will become roll available fiscal in fiscal year 26. 26, <laughs> right, is where year. it would roll out to in the end, yes. Okay. That is correct, if that makes sense to folks. Um, I see that the year-end balance is listed at 1,664,240 estimate, of course. Uh, am I correct that that would be described as the available uh, funds currently, not reflective of any future debt requests, that that's the available uh, unencumbered funds? That is correct. And yeah, that, so that does include the 164 or not? Mm -hmm. that that does this 164 1. 1.6 million does not include the 164,000 um so oh, with good. that we have if we choose to use it that's why down down here at the bottom this is highlighted in yellow if we choose to use it we have 1.8 million dollars okay. if we use it for another project Oops. Oh, this is a PDF. I can't take it away. But if I if I if we decided not to use it, we would just have the one point six million. If we decide to use it, we have the one point eight million. OK, uh, that's good to know. Um, do any committee members have questions on the existing uh, spreadsheet that we're looking at? Bob, I see that your hand is raised. Yes. Um... The extra 123 that came in from the state match, is that included in the 1664 at the bottom? Yes, it is. Yep. It is. Okay. Yeah, I believe when we originally started, and, and I'm going to, as we get into our, um, you know, beginning with the straw poll and eventually deliberations, um, you'll see all the projects here. But originally our shortfall was, I think, about 740 two, I want to say, on the original set of financials that we rolled out for our first meeting. Uh, thank you. Uh, Robin? Um, I, this is not actually related to the spreadsheet, but it occurred to me, and I don't know if we've addressed this at a different meeting when I was doing my own numbers. Do we, are we required to do a minimum set aside for open space since we my understanding is we don't have applications in that category. 
Um, so yes, there you are required to do the 10% minimum of what your estimated revenues are, which is 137.5 um, in, in the three categories, open space and recreation are added together as if they were one category. And um, and we we do not need to worry about that if we don't reach that ten percent minimum or have a proposal or a uh, an appropriation of at least one hundred thirty seven thousand five hundred, we would need to reserve a category specific. But between the debt service, it it pretty much covers um, oh, okay. the ten percent okay. in most of okay. the cases anyways. Uh, I yeah, I didn't realize yep. debt service was factored in there. Okay, great. Thank you. Debt services. Yep. Uh, Matt, you had your hand up. Are you still seeking to comment or ask a question or anything? Oh, I already made the point I was going to make. Okay. Um, anyone else have Questions or comments on this slide? It looks like we have uh, six one million six hundred sixty four thousand plus uh, readily available. Uh, one point eight two million plus if we are factoring in the fiscal year twenty four cash reserves, which is to be determined. Uh, Tim. Yeah, thank you uh, for including the debt uh, payment schedule. That was helpful. Okay. I don't really need to refer to that. I was going to go okay. back to the other spreadsheet. Sorry about that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was helpful. Was... <laughs> My point was, as we begin our discussions, uh, obviously we are short by a little over 600000 And in our deliberations as to which projects to approve or not, that obviously is going to be... Uh, have to, to be taken into account. And I know some of my ratings are definitely related to the fact uh, of which projects are less important and therefore we can start to dip into that 600 and some and change. But one of the things about debt is we actually had before debt 2.1 million available. And then we are already committed to spending 520 for debt. So that's roughly a quarter of that amount, about 25% or so. So just as a my thinking and as an editorial comment, I, I have some, I would like for us to cons think about cautioning uh, adding more debt because it's going to forego and basically uh, mortgage our ability to approve future projects as we come down the line. So I just wanted to get out, get that out there for everybody to think about as we proceed. Uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, Holly, I think it would be helpful. Oh, excuse me, Katie. Sorry, <clears throat> Sam, I appreciate Tim's comment. Just want to counter a slightly by saying, if we talk about it as servicing debt, it does feel like, ugh, you know, like we're, um, but it is, pro it is really important projects. So, I don't want that to go unstated that mm. it's still CPA funded projects that are doing good things for the town. And while I do agree with Tim, I just want to say that, you know, we have to be careful that we don't, that we end up not having anything um, to do future projects. On the other hand, um, they are projects being done and, and, and being taken care of. And so I just wanted to add that in. Thank you, Katie. Uh Holly, I think it would be helpful to show your second, second slide uh, with the debt projections. Uh, I certainly uh, like to look at it. I looked at it earlier and I enlarged it like 200% uh, so that we can start just for committee members who might not have seen this yet. Holly, would you like to explain it? Uh, I'll try my best. So um, these are our projected debt payments for FY25. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult for me to explain, but, you know, when we do choose to um, authorize a, um, a borrowing on a CPA article, then it gets added to all of the other projects in town that the 
the, t the town is borrowing for. So typically it can be anywhere from three years, five years, or 10 years. It sort of depends upon the amount of debt that we are going to be going out for. These, um, the debt and the borrowing authorizations are all, you know, vetted through the collector treasurer's office, the comptroller's office, the town manager's office. Um, and so currently these are the projects in FY25 that we are committed to making payments on. And then sort of they'll, they'll play out for a five to 10 year period. Um, you know, again, at this point, they are projections. The interest rates do sometimes change depending on whether it's short-term or long-term debt, but this is currently what we have obligated out in, in projects for the next couple of fiscal years. Um, and I am going to have to double check on this because I think thought that Kendrick Park was done in FY25, but this is showing one more payment, so I may have to double check on that. I believe that Rolling Green and Kendrick Park are done in 25, but there is a possibility that there's one more payment. I'll have to, I'm going to have to verify that number now that I see that. Uh, Matt. Yeah, so I sort of, um, I appreciate what Tim said. What jumped out at me with this debt schedule uh, is that we have three pretty large projects that are just beginning in financial year 25 and 26 um, that contribute to uh, a pretty substantial amount of payments stretching out um, for 10 years or so. So uh, while I am comfortable with, um, I'm not uncomfortable, I should say, with the 520,000 annual debt service but if we were to put more on that it would increase for the next 10 years which would put us in a rather in a less flexible position maybe i should say going forward uh, thank you matt comments from other committee members bob uh, maybe just a general comment if you did this might be a good year to be very conservative about debt in the sense that um, interest rates are very um, sketchy right now. We don't know. We, a year from now, we could be looking at debt at 3% or we could look, be looking at debt at 9%. So um, just delaying might be prudent. Uh, I think it would be beneficial, uh, Holly, if you're able to uh, give an indication of uh, what our anticipated interest rates are for new projects. If, if for example, we were to choose to fund one of these this year, do you have any guesstimate of what that rate might be? Just ballpark. Um, I'll hold you to it. I'm I'm a little hesitant, but. Uh, because it really all depends on the timing of the project because yeah. it, 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 you know, once again, the way that this works is even if we were to authorize a project for FY25 that was going to be a borrowing article, that borrowing typically does not happen until the project is completed. We don't necessarily borrow money ahead of time. We borrow mm -hmm. money when the project is done and we know exactly how much it's going to cost. So that the borrowing for that could be literally um, a year and a half down the road, could be two and a half, three and a half, four and a half years down the road. So right now with our next um round of borrowing that will happen, you know, sometime before the end of this fiscal year, likely in April or May, we're projecting approximately 4%, which is up from the, you know, two and a half, three percent that we were getting um, in the last few years. But I, I mean, I, I do not have a crystal ball. I can't say what they will be like a year and a half, two and a half, three and a half years from now, but we would likely project it out in the four to five percent range at minimum uh thank you that's very useful information i have to confess that i was not aware that the ball the borrowing took place commenced upon completion of a project would i be correct in indicating that 
for the track and field and for the Jones Library, for example, uh, we have not yet initiated borrowing for those projects. We have not. We are wow. anticipating, okay. I believe we are anticipating them both to start in FY25. Okay. Uh, uh, thank, we thank are you, anticipating Bob, for asking that question. We anticipate one to start in FY25, and we anticipate one to start in FY26. But again, there may be short-term borrowing or a small, like if only half of the money was spent, we wouldn't necessarily borrow at all. And and those are, um, you know, town financial policies and things is because we've, you know, if you go out and you borrow the full seven hundred thousand dollars, and they only spend six hundred and fifty of it. For example, they they spend a little less, or a project comes in a little less than anticipated. Then we've got funds that we are we have not used, and it creates a lot of accounting issues. So typically, borrowing is not done until a project is complete, or at least the the portion of it that's borrowed is only equal to what's been spent up to that particular point. If that makes sense. So it's 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 very hard to judge, um, you know. And again, um, estimates at this point. <clears throat> this is a little large to see, I think. But um, these are estimates at this point. The FY twenty five ones are are more than likely pretty darn close. But when you start getting out into twenty six to twenty seven to twenty eight, it it's it's hard to judge. Uh, great. What a new borrowing would be. Can you enlarge that lower debt schedule screen one more time? A little bit larger. And go to the bottom. Uh, what I noticed on this, aside from the commencement of the projects and the years, I noticed the total amount of debt for each fiscal year highlighted in gray at the bottom, mm -hmm. uh, 520,000 estimated for this year, 523 estimated for next year and then it starts to decline a bit if we can scroll to the right 472 estimated in fiscal year 27 457 442 so it starts to decline but it was that large number that i looked at and i was surprised to see i hadn't looked at it in some time that it's still 400,000 plus in later years uh, that does not include any uh, any borrowing that we might initiate at this time, but those are the numbers that I uh, paid attention to. Uh, uh, so thank you so much for uh, right. I mean, doing so all the work to provide this for us. Right. So these two projects up above will be will be dropping off, and I and again I will double check. They'll both be dropping off in twenty five, or one will drop off in twenty five, one will drop off in twenty six. But then we've picked up some rather large some of the larger ones um you know 500,000 for the uh SROs on um Northampton Road uh the Belchertown um road purchase the Jones Library collection was a million dollars Amherst Regional High School track and field 800,000 so those were rather large ones that are that are stretched out over um 10 years because of the dollar amounts um so and then adding in the Fort River Elementary School, these are all rather large projects. So it's nice to see them drop off. Does um, I, I love it when they drop off? <laughs> uh, Matt, yeah. So just a small question, which probably doesn't impact the projections, but when you go out for a bond, is it typically a fixed interest rate or a variable interest rate? Um, when it is a long term and a a full on bond, it is it is a fixed rate. When we're doing bands, which we'll sometimes just roll over for a few years until we have until we go out for a permanent bond, then um those those are variable because those are only like for a one year term, and then we'll decide the next year if we're if we have enough. Um, capacity to put out a a large bond. We'll we put everything that's going on in town together, and if we only have, you know, say a million dollars worth of stuff that we're going to be um need to bond this year, we may just roll it over for a year and wait till we have four or five or six or till interest rates are where we want it, et cetera. So okay, thank you. I think that I'm bands variable. Long term is set. 
short answer. Uh, Bob. Um, uh, Holly, thank you. You just answered the first part of my question. The second part is, um, how, what is there a, a dollar amount that is the lower limit that you would uh, finance or so in other words, some of the smaller projects don't really qualify for financing or is it just the larger projects that you, you finance? That's a great question, Bob. We we don't necessarily have a um I I don't I don't think there is truly a sort of cap on that of where we would start, but it would be anticipated or it would be in I think the town's best interest and everybody's best interest to only be bonding larger dollar amounts. I mean, you could look at a couple of different ways if we had five hundred thousand dollar projects we could borrow all of those or if we had one five hundred thousand dollar project we would just borrow for that one project instead of having five different projects i don't think there's th that's really up to to you folks on how you want to stretch these dollars and where you want to see these dollars go um i can tell you our our collector treasurer would probably be pretty angry if i came to her with a thirty thousand dollar borrowing article um but if that's what the committee chose, you'd have to figure out how to make it work. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, I have a question for you, Holly. I seem to have lost my camera here. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Um, regarding the fiscal year 2024 cash reserve, the 164000 mm -hmm. Um hypothetically, if we were to choose to vote that into uh, funds for use with our fiscal year 2025 projects, um, is that something that we submit with our recommendations to town council with the, in other words, is it one of the items that we include? I don't recall if we include that in our report or if it's an entirely separate uh, process. Uh, no, it, it would be in part of our regular report. So when we submit our report to town council, we have to tell them basically what our funding sources are. So our funding source in this case would be, you know, we, we basically have to pick a project and 164,000 of it would come from the budgeted reserve and the remainder of the balances would just come out of what we call our estimated receipts or our estimated revenue. So it is part of the whole package. It's just a slightly different funding source that is named in that okay. document. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. if we had like, you know, for instance, if one year we didn't spend our 10% minimum and we had to budget a reserve in historic preservation, then we would just say that we're using the historic preservation reserve to fund one of those projects. So it's it's just verbiage that needs to be included to make it clear. Okay. Uh, thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments from uh, any committee members? Okay. Well, this has certainly been uh, very helpful. Um, the next item on our agenda is to, uh, I believe, begin with deliberations. But before we do that, I'd like to take a couple minute break so folks can uh, gather their thoughts. And uh, it's currently 7.21. Uh, so I'll uh, take a break until 724, a three minute break, uh, and we can commence again at that time, three minutes.
So I'm going to wait for uh, a couple of folks to return. Hey, uh, Sam, right there at the end, you asked a question that I missed. I got Holly's answer, but I didn't get your question. Um, I believe I asked uh, if there was a distinct process in terms of how, if we chose to vote as a committee, the cash reserves of fiscal year 24, that is to say the 164 some odd thousand, if we chose to vote that into fiscal year 25, meaning this year's round of applications, uh, is there a distinct process affiliated with that other than submitting it with our report to the finance committee and then the town council? And she said, no, that's how it would work. We have complete flexibility as a committee uh, during the time period to do what we wish. Thank you. Uh, I, Katie seems to be here. Who are we missing? Uh, possibly David and Holly. Would you like to wait, Matt, on your question until? No, this is just this is to Bob. Um, so I assume you were talking. You were your question was related to the minutes, and just for you and for anyone else, I found it very helpful to review the YouTube video, which is basically what we see in Zoom which is available after a few days. And when I do it um, to, to check my notes, I run it at double speed, which Good. Uh, goes, a, goes a bit faster. Good, thank you. That's very helpful. I like to take previous minute templates. It's quite helpful with uh, the beginning of the names and uh, some of the general headers. And I typically will edit an existing set of minutes that's my process again to save time. Yep. And I'll likely have a template that uh, I'll have to double check on that, but I likely have a template that has sort of those major headings on it. But it sort of makes sense to use a prior one because names and stuff are already all in there. I will use all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> So it looks like everyone has returned. Um, I see David is joining us now. Um, so the, the next item on our agenda is a straw poll of just our initial thoughts on projects. And for those in attendance, we uh, rate projects initially from one being low to five being high. Uh, and it's for the purposes of just seeing which areas there might need to be a greater level of discussion, uh, which projects might need greater level of discussion than others. Um, sometimes uh, myself, for example, if I like a project, but I also have questions on the budget, I may uh, lower my rating for the purposes of uh, having greater discussion related to it. Um, so this is just an initial process with committee members uh, having the opportunity to change their ratings. Um, we subsequently give a brief comment uh, on our thoughts for every project, each committee member, and our committee members can be influenced by the thoughts of others. And then thereafter, after we've gone through the initial ratings and comments brief comments, then we discuss a little bit more thoroughly. Um, so before we commence, Holly has a very helpful chart for us, similar to what we've done in years past, uh, so where every project is listed, which category it's in, what the dollar amount requested is, uh, a column with the totals, and then all of our names to provide ratings. Uh, and on the lower portion, it was quite helpful last year, uh, the available funds. And uh, in past years, we had cash reserves that we played around with. So the spreadsheet format is very, very helpful for uh, 
just kind of getting a snapshot in a point in time of our committee. Uh, I do want to call attention again to committee members that we did receive some additional information today. Uh, we received from the Historical Commission uh, a statement uh, in regards to the North Zion Church indicating that the uh, proposal uh, to use the asphalt uh, shingles uh, meets with, for lack of a better term, their approval. Robin, did I say that correctly? Or uh, Yeah, you, it meets with our approval, but we also have our determination is that it's in line with the Secretary of the Interior standards for um, rehabilitation of historic structures. Okay. And that's a requirement of CPA. So it's a it's a proposal that can, according to the Historical Commission, meets within the uh, qualifications yeah, there's, to be considered. Yeah, there's essentially no reason to question the use of the asphalt shingles for the roof. Uh, in terms of the Secretary of the Interior Standards and the proposal overall is supported by the Commission. Uh, thank you. Uh, and I, I would comment that Doug Marshall, who's not here today, uh, had asked me to inquire of the North Church regarding their maintenance budget and any financials. He uh, was not a committee member the previous year. They had provided their estimate last year, which I sent to him. And the North Church did indicate that they uh, hope to respond to that inquiry next week, um, that they have some uh, obligations, uh, funeral services that they're spending their time on. I just wanted to raise those two um, items in relation to uh, our proposal. So, uh, I think what makes sense here initially is for us to go through each project uh, name by uh, name by name and to okay. then we will enter a dollar amount. In years past, we don't start with the same person every time so that they don't have to be first. Can and I? Polly is raising her hand. I, I don't know how to, I'm, I can't even find how to raise my hand at the moment. Um, Sam, <laughs> for efficiency's sake, I, I, I think I would like to try in a slightly different fashion this year um, instead of going person by person by person and then around person by person by person. I, I think it would be more efficient if we picked one person, got their 10 or 12 ratings, went on to the next person, got their 10 or 12 ratings instead of trying to keep orders and flows going. I think it would just be a little more efficient to do it person by person if nobody objects to that. Any uh, Any thoughts from committee members on that? Thumb up, thumb down, neutral. So for instance, I would pick I would pick Robin with her thumb up and say, Robin, give me your and just okay. That's type fine, them all right? in and then those discussions follow. I just think it would I think it would That's save fine. us time. No, that's fine. We'll go through each person, adjust numbers, and then thereafter we can start to have thoughts on projects. So whoever would like to start. I'm happy to start. Okay. So so if you can see the chart, we're going to start with number two and just go right down to 14. You can just read them off as basically as fast as you can read them, and I'll try to get them in there. <laughs> okay. I'm, hopefully I have them in the same order, too, because I'm referring to that. Thank goodness for two screens. Um, Amhat for 500000 I gave a five. Uh, Amherst Pre-Development Funds, I gave a five. East Amherst uh, Historical Local, Local Historic District is a four. Uh, Amherst Historical Society Condition Study is a five. Zion Church, a five. Uh, North South Cemetery is a four. Mill River History Trail, a four. Home Relocation House Move, a one. I have a comment that goes along with that because it's a one for complicated reasons. <laughs> um, pickleball, pickleball courts a two. Um, Mill River tennis courts a four. Softball facilities a four. War Memorial a five. And trail restoration and enhancement four. Great. 
So, got, Sam, now I'll, I'll got now. Doug Marshall's if, comments, who's not here, I'd okay. like to provide his if that works. Um, so, that, that's great. Yep. So, he has for uh, the Affordable Housing Trust of three, Town of Amherst Affordable Housing Pre Development a four, East Amherst Historic District Study Committee a three. Historical Society Accessibility and Condition Study of four, Zion Church a two. There are comments for these that I won't bring up at this point in time. Uh, Town of Amherst Restoration and North Cemeteries a five, District One Neighborhood Association a three, uh, Historic House Move a one, Town of Amherst Kiwanis Pickleball Courts a three, DP Town of Amherst Mill River Tennis Courts A4, Amherst DPW uh, Softball Rehabilitation A4, Town of Amherst DPW War Memorial Revitalization A4, uh, Conservation Department Trail and Restoration A2. So who, who wants to volunteer next? Tim? Okay, I'm oh. live. Got it. Uh, AMAHT funding five, affordable housing, town of Amherst five, historical study in East Amherst four, Simeon Strong five, Zion Church four, North South Cemetery three, Mill River History Trail three, Route Nine House one, Pickleball uh, two. Uh, I never mind. I'll get to that later in the discussion. Uh, tennis courts four, softball fields four, War Memorial five, and trails three. So Sam, I, I guess I'll I'll offer up an alternative to my um my method is if you want folks to make their comments after so like now Tim could speak to his numbers or if you want to do everybody at the end I'm I'd I'm rather open. do it at the end I'd okay, rather super. have everyone to have an opportunity okay. on a given project to speak so we're okay you know, staying on the same track uh, or. We could, yeah, at, we'll do this first, and then from there we can decide okay. how to proceed. Uh, so, so who would like to go next? Okay, Matt. Yeah, I can just give you the numbers because it's the same order. If that's the order four, is there, yep. Three, four, three, five, three, four. One, three, five, four, four, four. Okay. Next. I'll go next to try to provide a little drama relative to Matt's incredibly flat affect. <laughs> four, four, five, Two, four, five, five, one, three, three, five, four, four. Super. Next. I can go next. Right, go ahead, Tim. Still. Sam, you had your sure. Go, Sam. Uh, I have a three, four, four. I'll make sure I got these right. Which one are we on? The store. Uh, Amherst. Which one are you pointing at right now? Amherst Historical Society Accessibility uh, Conditions. Three. Three. Uh, 
Mail order history. Four, one, four, five, four, four, four. Okay, great. Michelle? Okay. Uh, four, five, four, four, five, five, three, one, two, five, 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 five. Okay, great. Um, David? Oh, do you hear me? Yep. Oh. Um, so are you able to see where we're at? We're starting with the um, Amherst. Amherst. Um, development. Maybe, maybe development. Maybe read the project title and then get the number. Okay. So the uh, Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust. Yes. Okay. Three. Three. So town of Amherst Affordable Housing Development. Okay. Uh, four. Uh, East Amherst Local Historic District. Um, three. Um, Amherst Historical Society Accessibility and Existing Conditions. Uh, three. Amherst Zion Church. Two. Uh, Town of Amherst North and South Cemetery Restoration. Um, two. Mill River History Trail. Uh, three. Uh, the Historic House Move. Four. Kiwanis Pickleball Courts. Three. Mill River Tennis Court Rehab. Two. Uh, rehabilitation of softball facilities. Two. Revitalization, revitalization of War Memorial Pool Area. Um, three. And um, Town of Amherst Trail Restoration and Enhancements. Four. Okay, great. So, Katie. All right. Um, five, five, four, um, four, five, three, four, one three four five 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 four five 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 okay so if everybody I, I don't know if you have folks who are all watching as i did it but just double check your numbers and then i think you can just go now and and then start those discussions with each person about the ratings you enlarge it slightly holly can i um you can try let's see can you still see it on your screen we can Okay. Um, and so no. just before Maybe we start. Maybe if you hide the columns no. E to I. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't see. It. I can go. Like yeah, that. I agree with Matt hiding the columns E to I. So you don't want to see the dollar amounts at this point? Uh, the total. The dollar fine. amounts are in column J. Oh, totaled. Okay. Yep. Yep. You're correct. Yep. Perfect. And then enlarge it even further. Okay. Now, anyone can, of course, change any of their straw poll ratings, whether it be uh, mis miscommunicated to uh, Holly or discussions. Um, what I think I would, Robin, go ahead. I see your hand is up. I just wanted to make a recommendation that we discuss by project as opposed to by committee member. I wasn't sure if that was, did we decide which way we were going to go, but that would be my recommendation. Uh, the thought makes sense to go by project. Um, and what we did last year was a, a quick comment on a given project, a br very brief, like a one sentence comment on a given project. And then thereafter, we can look at the individual projects in more detail. Uh, we don't have our full committee here this evening. Doug's not here. I, I don't anticipate that we would be voting on any uh, specific projects at this time. 
uh, but this is helpful to give us uh, an understanding. Um, so I, I share your thoughts, Robin, that if we go project by project, if a committee member wishes to share any one sentence, two sentence comment as to why they rated as they did, that would be helpful. Uh, it could be, I have questions about the budget. I have question about this. I like this. Or, or just no comment. Uh, so it makes sense for us to go through project by project with a very abbreviated comment for other committee members to hear and just gain an understanding. Um, so if that works for everyone, uh, we could start with the first project on our list, which is number two, which is municipal affording housing trust development funds. Uh, the requested amount was $500,000. Uh, and I'll just read names going across the top, one sentence comment, if that works for everybody. Uh, Matt? Yeah, so just a general comment about my ratings. I only rated a project five if I was both strongly in favor and also very comfortable with the total amount. Uh, if I was strongly in favor of a project, uh, uh, but I was had some question about the total amount that we would give, then I rated it a four or three. Um, so uh, in the case of the uh, the first uh, project, and it's my rating is very similar to the second uh, project also, um, I'm strongly in favor of giving a significant amount of money to the affordable housing. I just feel that there is some wriggle room in the exact amount. Uh, thank you. Uh, Robin? Um, housing is a profoundly pressing need, and we're not making progress against time, so I gave it a five. Uh, Michelle? Um, I kind of reiterate what Matt said, so nothing okay. new to add there. Uh, I gave it a three. Uh, it's an important need in town. Uh, large budget amount with some balance influenced my rating. But, um, who's after me? Oh, Doug. One, one moment, please. Let me grab Doug's spreadsheet that he provided me. Uh, Doug's comment was modestly support. Uh, Tim. Um, I gave them fives. It's the top priority in the town. I do have a comment about my ratings. I feel that when push comes to shove, we are going to have to shave some dollars. So I'm afraid we're going to have to probably shave a little dollars out of this, but I think the project itself is worth a five. Uh, Bob. Uh, what Tim and Matt said. Okay. Uh, David. Yes. Uh, any comment you'd like to make in relation to your rating for the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust? No. Okay. Uh, Katie. Um, <clears throat> I feel very strongly, as others have said, I, I feel that affordable housing is probably the most pressing um, issue. And I would be in favor of fully supporting one or both of these top two projects here. Um, and I have shaved off in other areas to try to make that so as I did my calculations. And I did my, I, I appreciate what Matt said at the beginning. That's a helpful framework. Um, I didn't rate, I rated it based on the sort of priority I saw um, based on the amount of money we had. Um, but in all cases, I think I have sort of a different, almost a different number for the rest of the projects. Uh, thank you, Katie. So uh, the next item on the list, again, we're just, if there's any brief comment, sentence or two that anyone wishes to make related to their rating, uh, it would be helpful. And if there's a general comment relating to how someone approached it, such as Matt provided, that's fine as well. Uh, the next listing of the Town of Amherst Affordable Housing Development Funds, uh, the requested application was for 275000 Um Matt, do you mind if we uh, call on you first and go just right across like we did? Or is it 
better to do what I did last year where I chose the next person in line sequentially. Do, does does anyone care in that regard? I I don't want to place one person with the burden of having to speak first if if it's an issue. Oh, that's that's no burden. It's okay. Up to you. Up no to problem. you. Pardon? No problem. All right. So I guess we'll do it this way uh, for for at least this round. Uh, Matt. Nothing to add. Robin. Same uh, reasoning as the prior proposal. Michelle. Um, I guess, like thinking back, I'd probably make this a four or two um, for the same reasoning. But yes, affordable housing would, development. Would you like to change it to a four? Yeah, I think on equal standing. If you're able to do that, Holly. Thank you, Holly. Um, I gave it a four, uh, smaller dollar amount than the AMAHT uh, and a few different projects of kickstarting proposals with development funds. Um, Doug's comment was advances towns affordable housing objectives. Uh, Tim? Yes, I would like to, I believe we heard from the applicants of the two housing proposals about their comfortableness with their dollar request. However, I think at this stage, maybe we could ask that if they could get back to us with um, what would happen if, say, we dropped the 500 to 400 or the, we didn't approve 275 and we only approved 200. I, I don't feel comfortable with making that decision if the applicants feel very, very strongly that they need that. I'm kind of in Katie's camp where those are top priorities from my perspective. I just felt there was a little wiggle room in the numbers but I'd like to see if the applicants could come back to give us some better sense of that. So I don't make that assumption just solely on my own opinion. Are you indicating what are the implications of a lower dollar amount? Basically, that would be what we could ask them, yeah. Because or, that's the discussion we're going to have. And I'm making an assumption that we might be able to give them less, but I don't want to, uh, since those are my top priorities, I really feel hesitant in doing that. But for us to meet our bottom line numbers, those are juicy targets, shall we say. Uh, so some form of question. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, Bob. Um, I'm with uh, the group on this being a top priority. I just felt like the um, the 275 is going toward more concrete projects that are um, a bird in the hand. And I felt as though the development funds might be um, cut a little bit because they're a little bit more speculative and could be adjusted in future years. Uh, David, we're asking uh, um, about the pre-development funds, housing. No, well, uh, I see housing is a major concern and issue for Amherst. And okay. I, I think the presentations that were made were um, very thorough and I would leave mine just as I have them. Thank you. Uh, Katie? No additional comments for me. Okay. And I'm just going to go right through these and hopefully we can, but we'll see how we do. Uh, East Amherst Local Historic District. The request was twenty thousand uh, dollars. Matt, I found this a relatively small request, and I like that uh, we're kind of getting a lot of bang for the buck because we're getting a lot of volunteer work from the um, the people, the the, the citizens. Yeah. Uh, Robin, um, uh. Again, a small ask. Um, uh, the work will go towards uh, local historic district, which is an excellent planning tool. Um, and our area is under development pressure uh, for needed housing, and that planning tool will um, serve a useful purpose. It will also contribute to uh, the Historical Commission being able to update its historic inventory. Uh, I consider it a very fall at, small ask with. Uh 
great involvement of the community, a very frugal uh, project. Uh, that's my comment. Uh, Doug, I think we missed uh, Michelle. It, oh, I'm sorry, Michelle. That's okay, but you guys <laughs> said, and also I just want to comment that I'm I'm reading within categories. So I don't know if everyone else is, but that's what I'm doing here too. So, uh, okay, uh, and sorry about that. This is probably why it's better to start with a single person each time because I had a few missed cues last time as well. Uh, Doug's comment on this uh, and his rating was no evident hurry to do this. Uh, the next would be Tim. Uh, Ditto Matt's comments. Okay, uh, Bob. Uh, supportive, no additional comments. David. Um, I would like um, I guess to raise the question, can you change your number? Certainly. Absolutely. Uh, two or four. Okay. So that was the East, East Amherst, Amherst, Amherst local, so four. Okay. Um, Katie? Yeah, ditto to whoever said um, big bang for your buck. Okay. Uh, the Amherst Historical Society Accessibility and Existing Conditions Study. Uh, the requested amount is 74350 Uh Matt? Um, yeah, I guess for me, the question was how urgent is this? That's why it got a slightly low rating because I felt it possibly could be deferred, but I might be wrong. Uh, Robin? Um, I felt that the applicant had a well-developed proposal. Um, it's time sensitive due to the Jones, Pending Jones Library project. Um, and they've shown uh, a lot of due diligence to pursue, uh, pursue additional sources of funding, which could potentially return CPA funds to the PD. Uh, Michelle. I did see a time sensitivity to this. It's a lot of money, so that's support for me. Um, I thought it's an important building for the community, a thorough presentation. Um, in the scheme of all the projects, not a huge ask, uh, and possibly the ability to parlay it into other uh, grants. Uh, Doug's comment on this was question mark less money. Um, I hope that I'm not reading his notes that uh, mm. actually, excuse me, I might have read that one wrong. It said, uh, I've got two different sheets. <clears throat> this was the historical provides upkeep of existing town assets. He did not say question mark less money. He said provides upkeep of existing town assets. Sorry about that. Um, Tim. Uh, again, under fair disclosure, I'm a former trustee of that uh, structure, and I know it has a huge need, and I thought the project was very well designed and is definitely needed. Bob. Uh, I gave it a low score because I thought I heard during the proposal that they hadn't really started to raise funds and they thought that that would be relatively easy. So that was the reason for my low score. Uh, David? Um, no comment. Katie? I really appreciated the proposal and similar to Bob, um, I just make a comment based on what you just said, Bob, which is um, I'm not a huge fan of funding plans upon plans upon plans, but I do know that in order to do some good fundraising, you have to have that kind of deep level of detail. And I think they said that this would allow them to seek state and federal funding. So I appreciate the fact that this could leverage um, dollars yeah. from outside the community. Uh, Amherst Zion North Church is next. Uh, I'm going to proceed if everyone's okay with that. Uh, and I think we can make good progress in the next half an hour uh, and it would be beneficial, I think, if we can go through these. If uh, folks start to get fatigued, please let me know. Um, <clears throat> uh, Amherst Zion Church, Matt. 
Yeah, before I get to that, I'm happy to upgrade my uh, rating for the previous project from a three to a four. Is that what you wish to do? Yes. Okay. Um, with respect to the Amazon church, I think it's a detailed proposal. Um, I think there are concerns that the um, the structure is at risk because of roof leakage, and that that makes a certainty. I mean, it makes a uh, urgency. Um, I'm sure some other people are concerned about the overall sustainability long term, as am I. Uh, Michelle, excuse me, Robin. Um, uh, echoing uh, Matt, also a note that this is a National Register uh, building. It's a very important landmark for the town and an important part of the early history of the community. And um, the applicant has been diligent to come back to us to uh, attempt to their uh, proposal in order so that this really important work can get done to prevent further deterioration. Mich Michelle? Yep, everything that Robin and Matt said, and also that this has been a multi-year effort and everything we discussed last year, and I'm glad to see that it's still here, and I hope it goes forward. Yep. Uh, I gave it a three, although I definitely think this is an important project that I would like to see get done. Uh, my rating related to some clarity issues related to the communication during the presentation. Um, and I just want to confirm budget and perhaps a need for contingency. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that the estimate, the assumed estimate is uh, viable. Uh, so that can be flushed out with additional inquiries. Um, <clears throat> Doug indicated on this one, his rating would be higher if he was confident of financial resources and did not feel that uh, the applicant would be fully reliant on the town for future building upkeep. Uh, Bob. Uh, Tim, Tim, I think. Tim, Tim. Sorry, Bob. Um. I am a little on, I rated it a four. I think it's definitely a need. I do have some concern as to whether that's a correct number. Uh, and I do have some concern that there might be some hidden costs that we just don't know about. Yeah. Bob. Uh, I hate water damage. I think it's important to get it done. Okay. Uh, David. Um, I, I need to change my number. I didn't, I, uh, the church is here in North Amherst. I live in North Amherst. I pass it every day. And um, that needs to be a five for me. Okay. Uh, Katie. Yeah, I am um, having similar to um, what Matt, and Michelle, and Robin have said, um, being on the committee for last year and seeing um, the church and its diligence come back over and over again, I while I have some concern about their ability to um, support the building going forward, it gives me a lot of um, indication that they will be able to do that. And I think if we were to use the current reserve so that this work could move forward in the spring or whenever it was you know, available to do, then the chance of the dollars going up you know, waiting for it to be funded next summer or fall would you know, be mitigated somewhat. Thank you. Uh, the next project is the Town of Amherst restoration of the North and South cemeteries. The request was for 150000 Uh Matt? Yes, I live quite close to the South Amherst Cemetery, and as I drive past, I notice a lot of gravestones fallen over and leaning precariously, so <laughs> I do agree that this is um, a, a necessary project. My question is uh, twofold. Does this need to be done this year or can it be deferred another year or two? And secondly, can we perhaps split this into two parts, like tackling the stones separately from the fencing? Robin. Uh, I gave this a four to indicate that there, um, in discussion with the Historical Commission, that there's some flexibility with the funding, certainly separating out the fence, which isn't as pressing of a deterioration issue as the gravestones. Um, and um, 
about a high rating because the cemeteries contain important information about citizens and settlement plan patterns and town planning and landscape design. Um, so uh, yeah. Well, Michelle. I'd like to change mine to four. Um, I think it's just an important public open space criteria, but I do think that splitting the fence and the gravestone restoration could be a topic of conversation. Hmm. Uh, I gave it a three. Uh, I agree regarding the uh, South Amherst Cemetery. I share Matt's thoughts on that. I have questions regarding uh, the uh, qualification of funding for the fences uh, and probably would seek to consider splitting the proposal into different categories or a different dollar amount. Um, Doug indicated uh, provides upkeep of existing town assets and also supports historical objectives. Uh, Tim. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I feel it's an important project. My rating is lower because when I went through all the projects and tried to shave out the roughly 600 and some thousand that were short, uh, I'm finding that this one might not make the final grade, uh, unfortunately. I think it could maybe, it's not critical for this year, I think. Uh, and with the shortage of funds, I think that might be a criteria. That's why I put it as a three. If we had enough money, I'd put it at a four or five. Thank you. Uh, Bob. I think given all those comments, I'll move my five down to a three. Okay. Um, so that was Saul from a five to a three? Right. Okay. Thank you. So I want to confirm. Um, David. Um, I want to move my um, rating up to a five. Uh, I don't, I'm not of the opinion that um, I can speak for the North Cemetery, which is right at the end of the street. Uh, and things are in pretty bad shape. So I would change mine to a five. Okay. Katie. I am definitely in favor of this and funding it. And similar to what others have said, um, I just think the, the urgency might be to do one cemetery this year or maybe just headstones in one cemetery in order to limit the amount of dollars. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mill River Historic Trail, the request is for $46,875. Uh, Matt. Yeah, I guess I felt that we were getting uh, a considerable amount of historical research for the dollars and that this, faci this um, facility, when it's, when it's constructed, would be a, a, a good resource for people in the town to learn about our history. Uh, Robin. Um, yeah, it's a rather relatively small ask. The applicant has made significant progress in the last year with their last award, and um, the project will provide important research that can fulfill the historic commission's obligations. Michelle. Um, I think that the ask is relatively small, but this is a multi-year ask, so I'm putting it in that context. My um, perspective on this is that it's on conservation land and um, has no conservation context currently. Um, there has been some feedback from people about putting signage on conservation land that the signs themselves detract from sort of the natural experience of a trail. And I'm cognizant of that. Um, I think that this is a beautiful river natural landscape and that putting signs that encourages people to put out, bring out their phone is maybe a detractant to the conservation goals and landscape. Um, and that is my concern in addition to it being a historical project on conservation lands. Um, I have great admiration for the frugality of all the volunteer work and the uh, community engagement of this project. Uh, I had some questions regarding qualifications um, and 
therefore, for my own purposes, I lowered it from a five to a four as I consider uh, and read the proposal one more time. But uh, I very much am uh, impressed with this group of applicants. Uh, Doug indicated uh, an exciting opportunity to educate residents about a relatively invisible part of town history, some concern about town needing to take over maintenance and upkeep. Uh, Tim. Uh, no further comments to those already made. Bob. Uh, same. David. Um, I'm going to... Uh, would like to move my number to five. I think this is maybe the third um, request um, about this Mill River Historical Trail. And uh, I think the group that's been working on it has probably done a very good job based on the first proposal that was submitted about three years ago. Um, Katie. I have no additional comments from what others have said. Okay. Historic house move. Uh, the request was for $98,000. Uh, Matt? Uh, well, there seems to be a fair amount of agreement between the committee members on this project. Um, I guess I felt that spending public dollars on the private house has, has to be a pretty high bar. And I didn't think this house was historical enough to really justify um, moving it. And Doug also pointed out that moving it might actually detract its historic value. Uh, Robin? Um, so I gave this a one. The reason I gave it a one at this point is because um, we are struggling with the concept of um, how to address, um, you know, in the past we've given funds to uh, entities uh, were considered giving funds to entities who were um, nonprofits uh, struggling with um, income. Um, at the same time, as I puzzled over this, um, I, I don't, uh, my one, it was really representative to um, decline this year and ask them to consider coming back yes, next year and for the um, committee to engage in a discussion about whether. Um, it would be appropriate, we brought this up at the Historical Commission, to do um, a no interest loan in the form of a lien on a house. This is something that's done, uh, that was done in my work in housing uh, rehab up in Greenfield. But I did want to emphasize that um, as far as the bar for significance of this house goes, um, it, it, it pretty much ticks all the boxes. It is a, a visual cue that you're moving into a historic district in the town of Amherst. It's a relatively uncommon uh, structure in terms of its Italian at form. It's on the National Register of Historic Places as part of a National Register district. And um, it is also representative of uh, an underrepresented neighborhood in terms of it being more of a laborers and um, working people's um, collection of housing. So for all those reasons, I want to just stress that I um, I really want to, I want to think about this more than, um, than maybe my 1.0 would um, suggest. Uh, thank you. I'd like to ask members to try and be, you know, one, two, three sentences or so, because we will be- It was a hard one. All of these further. Uh, <laughs> hard one. Yeah, well, I have to digest what Robin said, I guess, but- um, yeah, the, the moving back, um, reading more about the history and sort of the private versus public benefit was went into my reading. Um, I gave it a one. I have questions regarding the public benefit and I see alternative, uh, less expensive means of resolving the referenced issue uh, issues. Uh, one other comment is I didn't receive back any communication regarding the willingness to... Uh, except uh, HPR, Historic Preservation Restriction. Um, Doug's comment on this is reluctant to be supporting a private resident on a historic, but not especially in neat house. Uh, his comments. Uh, Tim. I uh, agree with Doug. And I think maybe uh, I see this as a precedent, although I'm not sure of the history of the CPAC of funding private homes uh, that are judged to be maybe historic in nature. 
And I think maybe we should have that discussion. Uh, I would, I agree with Robin that we need much further discussion because what about all the other houses on Route 9 or other people who have historic houses? I just have real concerns about CPAC using monies to help out private homeowners. But I'd like to have that conversation. But for this uh, year, I'd say one. Uh, Bob? Uh, nothing to add. Okay. Uh, David? Uh, I would say uh, change my number to one and uh, the historical comments uh, is very helpful information that uh, I'm hearing from other members who uh, are probably more familiar with uh, this particular house or properties that are historical in Amherst. One. Oh, okay. Uh, Katie. Sam, did you say <clears throat> in your comments that you had, that they had a conversation about historic restriction or? They, um, because they, they, that the request was made at the previous presentation right. of the applicant. That and we they don't answer a question if they'd be willing to uh, agree to historic preservation restriction. They were not willing or able to respond exactly at that time. They were going to reach out to town staff. Uh, we have we not heard back from them. Okay, that's what um, I wanted. That was yeah, my I can just jump in because my understanding <laughs> from me was that there was some communication that they were, would consider a preservation restriction, but that's third hand. So it's them to the town, to Nate, to me. <laughs> in a public meeting. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that that was just my my concern about that, um, and also I think what others have brought up, repair versus moving, uh, you know, there just seems to be a lot of question marks for me on this one. Uh, the next is the town of Amherst Kiwanis pickleball courts. I'd like to uh, reference Dave Zomack's comments at the beginning of the meeting where he indicated um, they wish to consider. The full range of options, not specifically Kiwanis, but they want Kiwanis to be a consideration along with other areas. So it's a communication from uh, the town of Amherst, I would say the applicant, uh, that individuals may not have thought of when they were coming up with their initial ratings. Um, so the request, uh, as it says here, is for $100,000. Uh, Matt. Yeah, as the Recreation Commission representative, I've been involved in a lot of discussions related to uh, pickleball courts in general and uh, Kiwanis Park as a possible location. Um, just in the very recent last couple of weeks um, or last month, I guess, we've had a, a lot of uh, feedback from the Misty Meadows. Um, over the past two years, we've had a lot of comments from the community, but this seems to be in a little bit of a state of flux. So I'm not confident that the $100,000 is really going to get us over the line. Um, so that's, and there seems to be a lot of uncertainty around this. So that's why my rating's a little bit lower. Thank you. Uh, Robin? Um, I just thought, saw it as highly desirable, but maybe not the year given everything, uh, considering the location. Michelle? I know this was sort of presented as pickleball, but not necessarily with the placement, but there wasn't really any compelling other place to put it and budget to put it there. So that's my two. Um, I have strong support for pickleball in Amherst. Having heard uh, from the community at previous years requested Mill River and in relation to the current request, um, I recognize the uncertainty uh, of destinations. Um, my rating is in relation to funding pickleball in Amherst. Uh, it is not specific to uh, Kiwanis Park at this point in time. Uh, and I'd like for the committee to have further discussions uh, related to uh, the proposal in pickleball in Amherst. Uh, Doug wrote one moment. I prioritize upkeep of existing facilities over the creation of new. If this were to replace an existing facility, I might value it higher. Okay, uh, Tim. 
Actually, uh, Doug's comment right there and in one of the previous meetings, uh, I do have some concern. I'm definitely in favor of pickleball. I'm just not sure, A, this is the year. Uh, B, with a question regarding the location, I have some concern. And C, I do favor attending to some of the existing needs like the softball fields and the tennis court rehabilitation over this project. Uh, so that's why I gave it a two. Uh, Bob. There's a lot to figure out here, and that's my um, my main concern. Okay. Uh, David. Uh, my three should remain as it is. I'm, my concern is about um, the residents or identifying the Kiwanis um, location. Um, I think there are some other choices in North Amherst uh, that should be considered. Uh, Katie. Yeah, I, I'm, um, my three doesn't maybe reflect this, but I'm fully in favor of pickleball. Um, and I also see this as a project that has a huge potential for private donations. So, and since it's so uncertain of the location, which I fully leave to the town and to the um, community to make that decision, I would maybe recommend something really wild and crazy like um, putting $75,000 in reserves as a match for um, raising money um, once the location is determined or something like that. But um, I, I'm, there's too many questions at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Town of Amherst Mill River Tennis Court Rehabilitation. The request is for $60,000. Uh, Matt. Yeah, Tim made the comment about uh upkeeping existing facilities. And that's also something that has been discussed in the Recreation Commission. So I think that uh, this is a focused proposal to up, upkeep, necessary upkeep on an existing facility. Robin. That's that's heavily used. Yeah, um, I agreed. Uh, my floor is just a matter of ranking among um, the recreation. Michelle. Agree. Um, these are Amherst tennis courts. They need some upkeep. Uh, my beta of five, I see it as a huge need. Anytime I've seen it in the past, I say to myself, why can't this get fixed? It needs to get done, uh, my opinion. Uh, Doug gave it a four, uh, provides upkeep of existing town assets. Uh, Tim. Uh, no further comments to those I've made. Bob. Um, I'd like to move my three to a four. I think I got blindsided by the fact that I can't play tennis anymore because of my knees and I'm mad about it. <laughs> so uh, just to confirm, that is Bob Williams. Um, a three to a four under On salt. pickleball. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, no. The tennis, tennis court. court. Your ten okay. tennis Sorry. Court. Yep, that's why I want to confirm. Thank same, you. Same goes for pickleball, though. Uh, David, we're asking about the, uh, if you have any comments related to your rating on the town of Amherst tennis court rehabilitation, tennis. the $60,000 request. Um, I would like to do, 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 change that number to a four. Okay. Uh, Katie. No further comments, Sam. Okay. The next is the re rehabilitation of softball facilities. The request is $85,000. Uh, Matt. Again, I think this is an important project, especially with Fort River going offline. My only question is to whether the full project needs to get done or whether some parts uh, can be can be taken out. Um, and just focus on community field. So that's open for discussion. Robin. Uh, same as same comments as before. Michelle. Um, I gave this a five because I think it's very important to revitalize the community softball fields across town and not just community fields like Kiwanis. Um, 
I gave it a four. I like most all of the recreation projects. I struggle with the overall funds that are available to our committee uh, and wonder about how we prioritize these specific projects. Um, Doug gave it his rating and his comment on the tennis courts is provides up provides upkeep, softball course a uh, softball excuse me uh, provides upkeep of existing town assets similar to his comments on the tennis courts thank you Matt um, Tim uh, I echo Robin's comments Bob uh, way overdue okay uh, David. Yes, uh, I want to change that to a four. Yeah. Um, Katie. Yeah, I just echo what everyone else has said in favor of something that's long overdue. Okay. Uh, the next project is the town of Amherst revitalization of the War Memorial area. The Project application request is seven hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, Matt, yeah, I feel this is an urgent project with the state of the pool house, and we need to uh, give some money toward this so that we can um, apply for grants as soon as possible. Um, I just feel that at the end of the day, when we're trying to make all our numbers add up, we might not get to the full seven hundred and fifty. Robin, um, pretty much everything Matt said. Um, I just gave it a five because I think it's long overdue. Michelle. Um, yep, what Robin and Matt said, and I figured that we'd have some more detailed conversations later, so five for now. I gave it a four. I'm very much in favor of the uh, efforts to revitalize the entire athletic and uh, community-based recreation facilities near and around the school. Uh, I'm uncertain on our budgetary concerns, so uh, that's why I give it a four. Uh, Doug, comment related to this are, again, provides upkeep of existing town assets. Uh, Tim. I gave it a five, definitely a needed project, long overdue. I would like to ask the applicant, if I recall, there was a range of project cost and then if it was a lesser project cost, the, the number that the town would have to use to leverage future funding would be less. I think this 750 was based on a higher project cost. So I am not entirely sure as to what the actual cost is going to be. If the town, if the cost is a little less, maybe the 750 can be a little less. And that's one area that um uh, I think as we try to meet our numbers here, we might be able to shave something off, but I think perhaps the town could come back to us a little bit better understanding of those those points. And by the way, this is one in which I do not favor uh, bonding or debt going into debt for this project. I think we ought to uh, pay for the entire amount and not go into debt to meet our numbers. Uh, thank you. Uh, Bob? Mm -hmm. So I uh, agree with all those, all those comments. The only thing I would add is when I look at that master plan for the athletic facilities and just decades of deferred maintenance, we, we, we're we going to eat our CPAC budget alive if we keep going down this road. So I would just be cautious about that moving ahead and think about it maybe a different way where maybe it's a big bond that funds the whole thing. Uh, thank you. Uh, David. Um, no comment. Katie. Um, <clears throat> I agree with Tim that we, I think we need more information around the matching r requirements um, because I'm fully in favor. I think this is a great project for the town. It'd be something great for CPA money to go towards. But I got the sense in the last presentation that maybe 500,000 would work, um, but I could have gotten the, the numbers wrong. So I'd like to hear more from the town on that. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, last proposal on the list is the town of Amherst trail restoration enhancement. The request is for $100,000. Uh, Matt. 
I'm a heavy trail user, as are many people in the town. Um, one of our Recreation Commission members said uh, Amos trails are world class and uh, the town struggles to, to really support that. So I think it's important to provide funding um, for maintaining our world class trails. Uh, but I gave it a four because I think there is some wiggle room. This is another project where there isn't a specific quote and there is some wiggle room in the total amount. Uh, Robin. Yeah, I'd echo that. Thanks. Michelle. Yeah, so um, the trail enhancement, a lot of that money goes to crossing wetlands and also the permitting costs of doing so, including the bog bridges. There's a constant deficit and need to keep maintaining those things. A big thing on this list is um, the enhancement of Puffer's Pond and making that swimmable. And that's why I'm giving it a five because that is a town gem, it is a cooling center, and it needs a lot of support. Uh, I gave it a four in recognition of the value of the trails and the volume of trails that the town works with. Uh, uh, I think it's important and the challenge relates as with many of these projects uh, to our available funds and what is the most critical need. Uh, Doug made the comment on his rating. I appreciate the need for trails, but would allow some to be abandoned in light of other priorities. Um, Tim. I gave this project a three. I would love to award 100,000. I just don't think in the final uh, analysis we're gonna be able to award 100. We'll probably have to award less, which is why I gave it a three. Um, Bob. Uh, nothing to add. Uh, David. Um, I gave it a four. Am I right? Looking at it. Yeah. Okay. Um, trails are very important to the town of residents of uh, Amherst in this county. We should continue to restore and also be sure that um, our residents are able to uh, enjoy that part of life of Amherst. Okay, uh, Katie. Yeah, I just echo everything folks have said in favor of the trails, um, especially Michelle, really appreciate your uh, detailed comments. That was really helpful to me. I'm a five on this. Thank you. So um, we've gone through an initial straw poll and brief commentary on all of the projects. Um, it, it, we're, we're at a point where it would make sense to uh, come back another day and have further discussions on individual projects. I think it would be beneficial, uh, Holly, if you could scroll down and display again what the total requested amount of all the projects is, uh, net of any uh, debt and funding. Um, I seem to recall that it was 24, 2.4 million. I'm wondering if I'm missing something here. Yeah, it was 2.4, but then when you added Add in debt. the use of the reserves, it dropped it, Sam. So can we see on this page what... Uh, Again, or maybe the, the page that you had earlier, what our available funds are. I believe it will be uh, helpful in this spreadsheet as we proceed. Um, we have, I, I may have misspoken. Our, our so, proposed projects is 2.447 million, correct? New projects, that is correct. Yes. And distinct from that, uh, the debt service is included in our available balance, correct? Which is 1.82 if we include the 164. I guess what I'm getting at is a workable spreadsheet in the future as we make edits in our thoughts. And that you 
probably have already done that <laughs> here. Um, yeah, so my suggestion would be, um, so it's 2.4 million of okay. new projects proposed plus the 520 of debt, which we are obligated to pay. So it's 2.9 altogether on this sheet. But uh, our, I believe it's helpful for the committee to um, see what our available funds are. Uh, if I understood correctly, we had about a 600,000 shortfall. Is that correct? Yeah. So yes, if we choose to use the 164,000 okay. of reserve funds, the shortfall for the new projects would be 618,000. Okay. If we did not use this or used it for something else during this fiscal year, the shortfall is 782. Do those two numbers appear on that rating spreadsheet? That is to say uh, the cash reserve for uh, set aside for 24 and the uh, net shortfall on our ratings spreadsheet? Well, this one, he, the, the 782 is... The net shortfall. The net shortfall if we do not use this. So I, I can add another line down here that puts the 164 so you yes. have it. If we use it, if we don't use it. And then Please. my suggestion, what I can do is I can just take this one spreadsheet and I can send it to everybody. So if they want to play with numbers sort of right on here and see other folks um, ratings, then I That can, sounds I can... helpful. Uh, for me, what's important is that as we go through our ongoing discussions, uh, subsequent meeting that, and, and this is what occurred last year, and it looks like it can occur this year, that we have the ability to factor in the implications of changes in the total request by project, as well as what we choose to do or not do with the uh, fiscal year 2024 uh, cash reserve. So I believe that's what you indicated, and that'd be very helpful. Um, I see your hand, Tim, just give me a moment. Um, so we can all probably contemplate further on the proposals. We can reread them. We can digest what we've heard from committee members. We certainly can change our ratings again, uh, anyone. The purpose of the ratings is to give us a general discussion. It appears that our, um, challenge uh, for most of the projects uh, is a financial challenge, uh, meaning where do we fund it and where we don't. I did hear requests from committee members to inquire of a few of the larger dollar value projects. Uh, essentially, do you need all this money and what would happen if you don't receive the full amount? Something along those lines. Um, I'm not looking to adjourn at this moment because I'd like four committee members here to uh, be able to comment with their raised hands. But the thought is that the current plan is that at the next meeting, we'll discuss projects again uh, on a project by project basis, and then we can play around with numbers. Uh, Tim, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I did play around with numbers and um, I would find, if you look at column J, uh, for the project. And let's just use the uh, development fund, the AMAHT development funds. If you total up column J, that totals to 2.4 million. We have to take out 600 and some thousand. That's the shortfall. So what I did for me was looked at all these projects and said, okay, can we get to that 600 if I award 500 to the development funds. And my answer was no. And I dropped it to 400. So I saved 100. So then I have to come up with another 500. So I would be interested, just really curious as to what other people feel for each of these projects. How much money would you actually award to get up to the correct total? Or how much would you delete from each project to equal the 600 some thousand dollars? I don't know if that would be a helpful exercise, but that's where we're going to have to 
come to because for, except for the historic house move which seems like a slam dunk non-approval we're going to be debating all these projects and they all seem pretty good from everybody's perspective the question is how much money we're going to have to be able to uh, distribute so maybe we can have that exercise as we discuss the value of the project also discuss well how much would we feel comfortable with awarding for each of the projects and then see how you get to this 600 and some thousand if that makes sense i i think that is the critical question and i did have a similar exercise to you in my approach to looking at the products projects a question would remain uh from the committee uh, if there was a desire to fund beyond the uh, existing available funds, similar to what we've done in past years, that's a discussion to be had. But it's certainly a useful exercise to look at the requested project totals to identify if there are areas where one might seek to reduce. And uh, the reason I was inquiring of Holly is that I think if there's... <clears throat> A spreadsheet that allows for those variables to occur. Uh, for example, instead of column J and K, if we have another column in between uh, that would have fluctuating dollar amounts so that we can, as we discuss it. Uh, and I suspect that's where we will be. Um, Matt. Yeah, I actually have a few separate comments. Um, okay. uh, a lot of these proposals are from the town, especially the larger ones. So I'm hoping to get uh, a recommendation back from the town, much like we did last year, about how we might meet these uh, budget. Mm -hmm. um, I have a specific question about the War Memorial area number. Now, this, what the situation is there is where currently, uh, we haven't even started actually, a schematic plan. So... Um, at the end of the schematic plan, there will be a much uh, more, not exact, but more accurate uh, understanding of the total budget. Um, is is Would it be possible for CPA to grant some money and then once the actual budget is more established, go through the regular town capital process to uh, make up uh, a, a separate difference. That's not a question for right now. That's a question to respond to next week. And then my third point is um, currently, uh, given the um, debt schedule, I'm pretty resistant to uh, putting any further projects under bond. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, I see that Dave, you have, Dave Zomack, you have your hand up. Um, thanks, Sam. Yeah, um, I know it's getting late for everybody. Um, you know, part of my role is to work with staff. And and as Matt said, seven or eight of these are Town of Amherst proposals. So I'm happy to work with staff on the questions regarding all the questions, but specifically the larger uh, ask of War Memorial Pool and also the Trust Town of Amherst uh, interface there. Because, of course, we work, we we, the town and the trust are together. We're, we're collaborators. The trust is part of the town. Um, so I'm happy to work with Carol and Erica as the co-chairs and my staff to really dig into that 500 and 275, as well as the 750 for War Memorial Pool. Amy Rusecki is here from DPW in the audience. If you wanted to answer that question tonight, or we're happy to dig into it between now and next Thursday. I will say the main consideration of that larger amount is that we need to have a match or a grant submittal in July, June, July of 24. So the state looks for that match already in place. So I hear what you're saying, Matt. Could could CPAC say, oh, give a quarter of that or whatever, you know, half of that. But the challenge is the state won't wait. The match has to be in place. But we can dig into that a little deeper because, and we'll look at that, what is that What is that exact number? Is it five or is it 750? The challenge is we don't have the project designed, so we don't know what percentage we'll need, but um, happy to do well, it. My, happy my to specific question, 
my specific question is there another capital allocation in time uh, from the town to make up any shortfall there's always the possibility but there's no guarantee that the capital plan given the four capital projects that are ahead of us including the library the school the school and and tbw and, and fire station will whether we'll have the the capacity to do a big ask is anybody's guess but amy is here tonight if you wanted to ask her or we can come back next week we will be here next oh, week Thanks. i'm happy to get it next week i don't expect it tonight so uh, I'd like to follow up again with uh, uh, highlighting Tim's thoughts, uh, which, forgive me if I paraphrase, that it makes sense for committee members to look at projects in terms of, I guess, prioritization, in terms of which ones are more or less urgent or desirable, uh, as well as which ones might have uh, the capacity to have a lower amount than re requested um, with the thought process that we do have a large gap between the applications, the requested amounts, and the available funds. And then associated with that would be the question, if we really wanted a particular project, would we do what we've done with a couple of other larger projects in the past? So if committee members can think about um, which projects they seem are most crucial in terms of time frame as well as uh, dollar amount options, uh, and then we would have a starting point for input from uh, <clears throat> feedback from any from the town as well as from our committee members of uh, Michelle. Yeah, so just to clarify, it, it sounds like you're talking about sort of this gross um, across the board prioritization. Would it be helpful to be able to see what the minimum allocation is per grouping? Um, I'm sure that everybody has probably done that on their own, but I don't really have time to you do mean it. 10%? But, yeah, like the 10 percent like it's on the financial uh statement that holly provided us which so one the, the if I... uh first the first one we got not the debt schedule but the uh what's it called the budget projection uh holly could you uh, I so, hand this up. yeah so the minimum is there the 137.5 but if you look right. when when you all get the spreadsheet as well at the bottom is the total per category. So community housing, this is the okay. um, that may include. No, it does not. So the totals are down here. So for community housing, we have a million for historic preservation. We have 707 for recreation. Right now it's 1.2 million. So that's the totals by category, if that's what you're looking. Inclusive well, that's the that. total ask by category, right? Ask, yes. So given like the actual budget with the reserve, do we have a number that we're like potentially able to allocate per the category? It's 137,500 for each category. Minimum. So Which we have meet to with the debt. The what? debt alone well, the... meets that dollar amount. Yeah, the minimums are going to be covered already by the debt service. Okay, so that's really not an issue then. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Robin. Um, I was just hoping um, to ask the town to come back with a more specific number for the cemeteries too. And we did discuss that in the um, historic commission meeting on Monday, but um, obviously they would have a, they would have a better sense of how to parse those numbers. Um, okay. Uh, any comments at this moment from any additional uh, other committee members? Tim. Yeah, I just keep that spreadsheet up. If we look at col uh, columns or uh, yeah, uh, columns L, M, N, where we put our ratings, if we had a spreadsheet where Matt, for example, could put what would he award the AMAHT? It's five hundred. Ask what would he award? What would Robin award? What would 
Michelle Award and so on. And then that's, I think, what a, that's what I did in a, a chart for myself. And I don't know if it would be helpful for everybody to be able to it fill in complicated. the cells. What? It could get it, complicated. It could get complicated, <laughs> but that would be interesting. And if you want to fully fund a project, then it would be clear. Like Matt might say he wants to fully fund the 20,000 historic districts, so he would put 20,000 and so on. Uh, but that's just a suggestion. And I think if we so think whatever. about the, the dollar amounts in the budgets, we'll be at a good starting point uh, for our uh, okay. prioritization. Enough. And I, I thank you again for uh, raising or sharing your thoughts in terms of how you approached ratings, uh, which actually had some similarities to how I did it. I think it's helpful for discussion. Um, Robin, I believe your hand is up next. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think in previous years, what we've generally done is somebody, if there's a, a there's a question to everybody of if they're comfortable with the amount, and if not, somebody puts forth their number, and we kind of go through it pretty quickly verbally, and that seems to work pretty well. Okay. Uh, yeah, we had some straw polls, and we'll, we'll have to see if we receive feedback from any potential applications for some of that differential. And there still may be a desire from some committee members to not proceed with some of the projects on this list as we go through discussions that remains to be seen. Uh, Matt. Yeah, just my response to Tim's question. Uh, I will definitely privately uh, do my private numbers, but in terms of committee discussion, I would prefer to um, have the town present a, um, a straw uh, 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 something that we can start discussion from. Uh, well, great. Uh, I think this has been a productive uh, meeting. Um, it is getting a bit late. It, it, it We've listed the, the meetings as from six to eight, although when we get to deliberations, <laughs> as we did last year, it tends to be a three-hour meeting. Um, and my guess is that our subsequent meeting will will have a cap around a three hour meeting as well, um, because uh, there's a lot to do. The dilemma is fatigue. If the committee members become too fatigued during a meeting, uh, you know, we can curtail discussion. We do have there's no required deadline for us to arrive at our conclusion. So uh, again, I would suggest that we all review the proposals. Uh, we have to confirm if there are any that we would not want to proceed with uh, and distinct from that, what dollar amounts might we wish to rate that might be different from the requested amount uh, with the mindset that there's currently either a $600,000 or a $780,000 gap, depending on the fiscal year 2024. If we approach it from that, we still can consider as a committee if we wanted to bond or not. So I guess I'm being a, a broken record saying the same thing in different ways. Um, I see a hand up, uh, Katie. Sorry, Sam, just to clarify what, what Matt requested. I. It sounded like earlier that was something that we were going to move forward on, but I didn't hear you in your summary about getting the town's um, prioritization of the requests that they're making and potentially different dollar amounts if that made sense to them to, to offer us as a starting point for next year. I mean, next week. <laughs> There's two variables there that I heard. One is we're seeking feedback from the town related to the town applications. That is to say the specific town recreation, uh, housing and other applications, what might they be able to consider distinct from the request? Might they be able to lower their amounts? A separate question is all 13 proposals, what is an appropriate slate? Uh, I think it makes sense to first hear from applications that we, are wondering if we can get a lower dollar amount. Maybe that aligns with the straw person, uh, you know, the, the tentative slate. I guess we could approach both. It's debatable whether or not we wish to discuss the projects before we're presented with a slate or not. We may, as a committee, wish to remove a couple 
I, it, it appears that we would want to remove the um, the house move, uh, and there may or may not not be discussions on the others. I think the best starting point would be for us to hear back from the town related to all the town proposals, uh, and then there can be adjustments thereafter. Uh, if that makes sense, which is kind of what you're suggesting, but not having the town suggest changes to the non-town proposals. Oh yeah, no, just just what they're they proposed. Yeah, right. absolutely. And I I'm not Matt, that's what I understood you to be asking if I misunderstood that that's sort of what I was hoping for, but maybe I was reading into what you were saying. Uh I was hoping I I found it very helpful last year when the town came back with a with a proposed um, response. In this case of this year, because so much of the money and so many of the proposals are from the town, I think especially those proposals I want their feedback on. Uh, the feedback will be helpful. And uh, thank you, Matt, for raising that again at the end. Um, I think we're winding down here in terms of uh, concentration levels. Um, <laughs> um, it, it, I would ask that all committee members consider the proposals, consider uh, the ratings that, and comments of other members, uh, the implications of the dollar amounts, and we'll start again subsequent week, hopefully with a, another member present as well, uh, and we can focus on those projects that we believe we may not wish to include, that is to say those that are uncertain, and how we address the gap in funding and feedback from the town on town projects uh, will be informative. Uh, so having said that, uh, if there are no further comments, I think we're good for uh, today. Uh, any last comments from any members? I don't wanna close off the opportunity to speak. So thank you all. It's a long meeting. Uh, I believe we're in a, good place in terms of being aware of um, what we need to consider and how to proceed. Uh, our next meeting will be a week from today, uh, scheduled at six o'clock. I believe I'll put the agenda till six to nine, if that's viable for town staff. Uh, maybe it'll be six to 8.30, I don't know. Uh, with the recognition that these discussions tend to get uh, complicated with the number of variables involved. Thank you all for uh, being here with, with us and uh, I'll adjourn the meeting at 8.57 p.m. And thank you for all the attendees who stayed with us. Hi. And Holly, if you can email us that spreadsheet, that'd be great. Thank you. <laughs>